Welcome to another edition of That Time When. Matt Miller with you in Studio 4. This is the podcast series where I take you for a dive through the Trexone archive. On this episode, That Time When, I chatted with Dave Galanta, Star Trek author, with an interesting Axanar story to tell. Today's guest, you may not recognise his name, but you should certainly recognise his work. He's written a couple of Star Trek books, including Foreign Foes, Dead Zone, Forever Dark in the TNG series, and Battle Lines uh, for Voyager as well. His name is Mr Dave Galanta. Dave, thanks so much for your time, and welcome to the Trek Zone Spotlight. Nice to see you. Now, tell us a little bit about uh, you as an author. How did you get started uh, as an author and, and writing for Star Trek? Uh, I actually uh, um, met uh, a couple of Star Trek authors, or a Star Trek author she wrote uh, with her husband, um, when I was very young, and they became friends, and uh, I was uh, trying to become a writer um, separate from them, and a professor of mine in college suggested I actually show them some of my work, which I did, and I ended up writing my first uh, next-gen novel um, with uh, with uh, Diane Carey's husband, Greg Broder. Um, they've been friends of mine now for 30 years, which I'm 46, so if you do the math, it's since I was 16 years old. Um, and Diane pretty much taught me how to write. Greg taught me how to uh, plot, because that's generally what, what his uh, character development and plot were his areas. And uh, so the first uh, four or so books that I did, I did uh, with Greg. Um, but it was easier for them to work as a team as a married couple, uh, they made all the money, but I had to split whatever I was doing with Greg. And the truth was, uh, I did the writing and he did sort of editing and, and plot. Um, and the fool taught me, uh, how to do it. So he, he, he ended up teaching me out of a, a job for himself. Oh. <laughs> um, and so my, my, uh, my solo work since then in track has been, uh, several, um, novellas, uh, short stories, and uh, the last two were um, original series novels, um, both sort of centering on Spock, which uh, have done well, uh, I guess, in some reviews, and I certainly am very fond of them because the original series is my, uh, my, my fondness um, for that is more than the other shows, even though I've liked, I've liked uh, pretty much all of them to some degree or another. So tell us a little bit about those original series uh, novels or novellas. Uh, are they still available? Where, where can we get them? Uh, yeah, um, uh, uh, Troublesome Minds is a full novel. Um, it came out, I think, in 2009. And uh, uh, last year um, uh, came out uh, a book called Crisis of Consciousness. Um, uh, Troublesome Minds uh, is a very Spock-centric novel. Um, a little bit less so for um, crisis of consciousness, um, but uh, but but still very sort of Spock oriented. Spock is one of my favorite characters, and in general, where a classic series is uh, concerned, I like focusing on Kirk, Spock, and McCoy uh, as best I can. I, I think they're sort of the more important uh, uh, characters. Although we do see uh, the budding love affair uh, between Carolyn Palamas and uh, Scotty in Crisis of Consciousness. One of the things that you can do in a book is focus a little bit more on some of the, uh, um, the uh, non-major uh, 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 non lead characters. Um, and so we saw in Who Mourns for Adonis um, that they had a relationship, and uh, this happens a little bit before that and allows us to see why do they have a relationship? Why is he a little bit smitten with her? Um, and uh, and hopefully that's uh, something that uh, that fans enjoy. What draws you to the original series? Uh, part of it is probably because I I grew up on it. I mean I'm not uh, I'm not old enough to have seen it uh, in its original uh, broadcast. But uh, my mom was a science fiction fan, and a Star Trek fan. She had introduced me to uh, to Star Trek. I think probably through the animated series um, when I was. Uh, gosh, six or seven, something like that. And, uh, and that pushed me into, uh, the regular show, which, you know, there's, there's something in a lot of adult shows back in the, uh, sixties and seventies, um, that a, a kid could sort of latch onto and get into, even if you, we didn't understand all of the complexities of character. Um, and I think Star Trek, original Star Trek has awesome characters. 
um, and that's deep, uh, multi-layered characters, um, which isn't always the case with, with a show from the 60s. Are you watching us on YouTube? Click the link in the description to catch this interview in full now. Maybe you're listening to us on your favorite podcast app. Then beam over to our official watch page and click the link there. Keep up to date with Twitter. Catch new podcasts daily on YouTube. Plus, we're beaming to your favorite podcast app five days a week. Just search for Trekzone and subscribe.